Hi, this is the fifth and final clip of um, this week's lecture on society. Uh, and uh, really, I just wanted to close the lecture by drawing your attention to some of the main criticisms that have been uh, made of the structural functionalist approach in British social anthropology, uh, which I went through in the previous clip, and also some of the overall premises of a kind of broader Durkheimian approach uh, in anthropology. Uh, I finished the previous clip by saying that um, structural functionalism has come in for a lot of criticism. Uh, so in this slide, I'll just give you a flavor of the kinds of things that people have said about it. So the first thing that I would draw your attention to is the inordinate emphasis on order that uh, structural functionalism uh, places. Uh, and that was immediately picked up by a very interesting uh, and dynamic group of anthropologists working at the University of Manchester. Max Gluckman was the great figure that trained a whole series of uh, anthropologists who all had in common an interest in dynamic change in society. So they were themselves, of course, influenced by the structural functionalist school because everyone was in Britain at the time. But they played a kind of antipodean uh, critical role up uh, from the point of view of the Manchester really looking down the map and criticizing London, Oxford and Cambridge for their fixation on, on, uh, on fixity indeed and order and said that societies are actually dynamic mechanisms. They are riven with contradictions, with tensions, with competitions and very much influenced uh, by Marx about whom we'll talk in a future lecture, uh, they mounted this critique of structural functionalism for being too static, right? Uh, a key figure, by the way, uh, of the Manchester School is Bruce Kapfer, who used to be the head of department in, in here at UCL. So we have a direct link with Manchester at UCL as well. And these ideas about social dynamism and change uh, have been very powerful in UCL uh, for that reason too, or partly for that reason. A second line of attack, if you like, that people have taken against structural functionalism and which is very, very almost kind of um, taken for granted as a major flaw these days of this model is, of course, its uh, rather fantastical emphasis on holism. So this idea that societies are these kind of bounded organisms that can be studied with reference to all the way in which all of the uh, different elements within them hang together and operate almost like a, uh, an organism might do and so on, presupposes a kind of never-never land in which these societies exist in isolation from each other and crucially in isolation from the colonial historical context in which the anthropologists who went there studied them, right? So when you look at these classic monographs of, you know, the Trobriand Islanders with Malinowski or the Noor with Evans Pritchard uh, or what have you, uh, you effectively don't get a sense at all that these societies are living in history, that these societies are subject and are reacting to uh, colonial um, conditions. All of this is kind of edited out, more or less. Uh, usually you find references to it in the introduction or even in the acknowledgements where an anthropologist may say, oh, thank you to the local administrator for helping me get to the field site and so on, right? Uh, I'm caricaturing a little bit, but it's, it's true that, that, that you find that, right? So this idea of kind of isolated holes has been radically questioned as well. Uh, and there's been a tendency since the time of structural functionalism to take history and power and, and global politics much more seriously than the structural functionalists uh, did themselves. A third uh, critique that I would like to mention uh, here uh, is basically a kind of dispute with this Durkheimian anti-reductionism. If you remember from the clip on Durkheim, the idea that social phenomena should be explained with reference uh, to themselves and not reduced to psychological or biological levels. Some anthropologists, certainly biological anthropologists, as the name would suggest, but also, as I mentioned in, in that lecture, cognitive anthropologists or psychological anthropologists would take issue with this and say, or even psychoanalytic anthropologists would take issue with this and say that actually cultural and social processes need to be understood by underlying psychic dynamics, psychological, psychoanalytic, cognitive, and so on. While biological anthropologists will, of course, say that so much that goes on 
at a cultural level and at a social level has to do with the, uh, evolu the, the properties of our species as an evolved um, um, uh, process, right? As an evolutionary process. Finally, and this is possibly the line of criticism that I'm most, uh, I've been involved in myself, I'm most um, kind of um, aligned to in my own thinking, is really to call out, if you like, the structural functionalism for being ethnocentric. Uh, and particularly this guiding fundamental premise that we draw from Durkheim, that the social and the individual are the two basic building blocks through which a study of society needs to be understood. So this opposition of the individual and society is itself a very particular way of thinking, a uh, very European, Euro-American perhaps, Judeo-Christian perhaps, way of uh, imagining what the world is made of, right? Uh, and there's two anthropologists that I would just mention in connection to this kind of critique. Louis Dumont, uh, a French anthropologist who famously studied um, the Indian caste system, lots of criticism of his study of the caste system as well, everything is criticized in anthropology. But one of the key points that Louis Dumont makes there is that actually to imagine the castes as groups of social stratification in which individuals could be interchangeable is a very uh, ethnocentric way to imagine it because from the point of view of the Vedic Sanskrit ideology uh, of, uh, of the caste system, actually the distinctions of members of different castes are qualitative. So you're a different kind of person. You're not just an individual occupying a different position within society. You're a different kind of being, to put it very, very strongly, if you belong to, 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 to a different caste from another person, right? So this idea of individuals as interchangeable units that come together to form different social formations needs to be questioned if you take the viewpoint of um, the Vedic um, uh, caste uh, ideology that uh, Durkheim, uh, sorry, that Dumont was describing. And finally, uh, perhaps my favorite anthropologist uh, of all time, next to Levi-Strauss, Marilyn Strathern, based on her fieldwork in the highlands of Papua New Guinea, but also fieldwork uh, in, uh, in, in Britain and in all sorts of different domains of, of um, society in, in those two parts of the world. Uh, Marilyn Strathern advanced this idea that individuals cannot be conceived as uh, isolated units if one is trying to understand the way that people in Melanesia are operating, but rather we need to rethink the way that we think about persons and think of them not as individuals, but as individuals, as being composed of all of the relations that they enter into. It's a pretty trippy and difficult way of thinking. Uh, it's one that you need to read a lot of Strathern's work in order to really understand how this might operate. But what I want to just simply say here is that it's another way to um, critically uh, question the fundamental value uh, that Durkheim and Durkheimian approaches in British social anthropology and beyond have placed on the distinction between the individual and the so social groups that are formed out of individuals, right? Um, that model, says Marilyn Strathern, needs to be radically revised if we're going to do uh, credit to the way that people in uh, Highland Papua New Guinea operate, think, uh, relate to each other and so on. Okay, I'll leave it there for this week. It's been quite a, you know, um, um, rich, so we say, shall we say, week. Lots of material to cover. I really look forward to discussing all this with you uh, in the lecture.